a serious salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Tonight, the third series, or third majalis of the series, um, I asked Brother Bilal to open today's program with the re recitation of the Holy Quran. Um, I saw what? I will من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والتين والزيتون والطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بيحكم الحاكمين صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات Salawat. So I made an announcement last last night, maybe the night before as well, about brothers who wanted and sisters, um, if they wanted to participate as well in, in some way, um, to you know pr provide your name and whatnot um, to recite. Alhamdulillah, every every day we're getting new names, uh, people who want to recite something something different. Um, today uh, we have a sauce and a salam recited by brother. Ali Nakvi, um, Sifad Ali, can you? Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Salawat. Ham wasile. Se kam lete hai Hum wasile se kam lete hai Daste hai dar se jam lete hai O char ke dora se dil Jo gabraye ya ali tera naam lete hum wasile salawat Salam ke sanche Abhi se ash ke aza ka Mujhe sila de do Abhi se ash ke aza ka Mujhe sila de do O abhi se ashke aza ka mujhe sila de do Jina mile na mile mujhe ko karbala de do Abhi se ashke aza ka mujhe sila de do O jaha maris ke कोई दवा न काम आए जहाँ मरीज के कोई दवा न काम आए वहीं पापर चमे अब्बास की हवा दे दो अभी से अश के आजा का मुझे सिला दे दो और मुझे न चाहिए 
جنت نہ چاہیے کوسر زمانے والوں مجھے کا کے کربلا دے دو ابھی سے عشق ازا کا مجھے سلا دے دو او تمہارے قدم کو چومے گی گردش دورا تمہارے قدم کو چومے گی گردش دورا کبھی تو آل پیمبر کا واسطہ دے دو ابھی سے عشق ازا کا مجھے سلا دے دو سلام So, you know, the reason why we've done these programs in these nights is, you know, many times, you know, we all want to wait, we all want to express our um, devotion, our love for the Ahlul Bayt. Oftentimes, you know, it's very difficult to do those things when there's many people who want to do them, right? Upstairs, for example, it, for many of you brothers, it's difficult to get a chance to recite poetry. But this is, consider this like a, one step before that, right? Where you can practice, um, you can you know, learn from the, et the etiquettes and also the, the way to um, recite some of this poetry. And also express yourselves in your way, right? Um, if you were to do something in English upstairs, people may not understand, you may not get the response um, that you're looking for, but here, we all understand English, um, we all understand, and sometimes we connect better in, in our first language. I know for many of us, Urdu is our first language, but it's, it's more easier for us to speak in English, right? Um, and one way to kind of figure that out is what language do you make dua in? Do you make it in English? Do you make it in Urdu, right? That's one way of seeing how your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, right? So today is, like I said, the third night um, of Muharram, and you know, as the coming nights continue, um, I'm, I'm expecting more of our brothers um, to participate um, in, in, any f in any form you want, right? It's spoken word, um, you know, like we, today we had the Urdu um, recitation. You know, tomorrow there's someone else who wants to recite as well. Maybe in Urdu, I'm not sure what language, but again, I want you guys to get into the habit of, of doing this because at some point, it will be you brothers and sisters who are going to be doing this, right? Um, we're gonna get old, their uncles are getting old already, right? Um, so we need to continue this tradition of, you know, pr doing adha, doing poetry, and remembering the name um, and the sacrifices of the Ahlul Bayt. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So now, Mulana, I invite Hujjah uh, Salam, um, Sayyid Fakhar Raza Rizvi to the, to the member to address today's majalis. Salawat. Salawat. <laughs> We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us another opportunity to sit here for the third night of Muharram and commemorate the days which we relate to when we are from, you know, really young. Even from our birth, we are related to these ayyam, these days. If we believe that whatever and that's scientifically proved, proven too. Whatever our 
parents do, it happens to us and it affects us. So if you see that when the Muharram comes and you try to come here, you try to commemorate, you wanna link yourself with Imam Hussein, it has to do something with your parents. And if your parents are alive, thank them. If they are not alive, go to their grave and thank them. Pray for them. Because of them, we are able to be on this path. We started our majlis with the discussion of being mu'adda, being having an adab, an etiquette of azadari, right? These praying for each other, especially for your parents and for your loved ones, is the etiquette which is emphasized in Islam a lot. And you must have heard about this, that Imam Hassan was listening to the prayers of B. Fatima to Zahra Allah And he heard that she prayed for everyone in the vicinity, in, his, in her neighborhood, but for herself. So this is the etiquette which is given to us from Ahlul Bayt And we believe in God, in Allah, that if we do something good for someone else, he's gonna give how, how many times of that? One hasana is equal to how much? According to Quran, 70. But then in the ayah says, Allah Ta'ala can increase it more than that. And when Allah says he can increase, there is no limit, right? His infinity, when he says what he's going to give will be more, that will be infinity as well. So, alhamdulillah, this coming here, even just putting these, you know, these things on the floor, a member, fixing the mic, anything you do for Imam Hussein with the pure niyyah of this, that you are doing it for Imam Hussein, is a hasana. And inshallah, it's going to be continued till in the next generation. When I see these small uh, brothers I have here and the small sisters sitting here, it's not only because one person is pushed, the parents have pushed them to come over here, but there's something in their heart as well. Maybe sometimes because we are living in different time and different place, that has dimmed in our hearts and or has some dust over it. But if we remove that dust from duster, it will shine again. Because it's in our fitra. Muhabbat of Ahl Bayt is in our fitra. Please recite the salawat. So the discussion we had, and we started, we uh, discussed about this, that we are going to discuss about knowing oneself. In what sense? Not in the sense of khud shanasi, but in the sense of khud uh, in uh, insan shanasi. So what khud shanasi and what insan shanasi is? So khud shanasi is self-recognition, right? And insan shanasi is to know what human is, what insan is. And what's the distinction between these two? Is this that khud shanasi is kind of a subjective thing. While the insan shanasi is an objective thing. If it's uh, becoming really difficult for you, brothers, please recite salawat. If you're understanding it, pr please recite bulantar salawat. That was not louder, so I need louder if you know this. I need louder than this. Please recite a louder salawat. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You know, we, I mean, we are all shy, right? Uh, but we see that there are small brothers come over here, not a small, not in a small in stretch, stature, but in age, and they like do poetry and everything. Uh, we, we don't have any shyness here. We shouldn't have any shyness here. Like brother said, if you have something, something, you know, uh, hindering you, do it here. If you make mistake, it's not a big deal. If you say one word wrong, if you are not, you know, your voice is not good, you're so, you know, peculiar about how you look, how you sound like, don't worry about that. And that's why we are here, right? 
We value ourselves with our appearances a lot, brothers and sisters. That's a pandemic here. <laughs> with the invention of selfie stick and selfies, that pandemic has become broadened. All we fix are fixated about is that how do I look, how do I sound, I don't care if I'm right or wrong. So coming in the camp and the tent of Imam Hussein, we have to fix this problem. If you are on the right path, I'm not saying that whatever you do, just it will be really beautiful. Do your best. But if it doesn't come out the right way, it's, it's not a, the best way, it's not a big deal. You're doing it for Imam Hussein. I was like, inshallah, you, a lot of brothers and sisters have uh, gone to Karbala walk. I went to a Karbala walk one time. I crossed the border from Iran, came to Basra. We read namaz there. <clears throat> and after namaz, salat, there was, you know, these sunflower seeds? They're just like they're small seeds. So I saw a really poor kid outside the masjid eating those sunflower seeds. And he, put, he went to his pocket and took a few of them out and gave it to me. What was in his head right at, at that time? That he's a Zaire Hussein? He doesn't know me, right? He's Iraqi, I'm Pakistani, living in Iran, crossing the border from Iran, going to Iraq. What connection I had with him that he gave me those sunflower, the, any, the thing he had, he offered it to me. And these things are turning points in your life, brothers and sisters. You see, when you see this passion and this, this purity of Nia, it should push you towards this. Don't be shy about doing good things. Please recite another salawat. Allahumma salli ala So we were talking about Khud Shanasi, the difference between Insan Shanasi and Khud Shanasi, right? So Insan Shanasi is that we need to know what the make and model of Insan is. Now I'm going to say Insan, like I said before, when I say Insan, you, it should be coming in your mind the human beings, like us, right? But Insan is a word taken from Quran and it has more meaning. So instead of saying mankind, human beings, I'm going to say Insan. And inshallah my uh, younger brothers would know what insan means here. It's a human being. It's like me and you. Why insan shanazi is important, we, would, we discussed yesterday, because we need to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So we are following this trail where it says that anybody who knows himself will know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why do we need to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we know, need to know when we are doing this, why are we doing this? Not only Azadari and loving Imam Hussain, but anything in my life, why am I doing that? These questions are important, brothers and sisters. Not only this, that I have to quench my intellectual thirst, but I need to know where I am, where I came from, and where am I going to go. We have a hadith about that too. My older brothers know this hadith from Imam Ali. He said that, may Allah have mercy on a person who knows where he came from, where he's staying and where he's going. When Imam is doing dua for a person like this, it means that person is on the right path. Another hadith says there are only two types of people. One is who's teaching and the other one who's learning. Other types of people, they're not people. Sometimes the text, holy texts become really harsh, brothers and sisters. But it's good. It's good for us. But then when we talk about teaching and ilm and all those things, we have to define these terms according to Islamic point of view and the Sharia, the way Islam used it. So just give a small uh, side note, a small thing. When we say ilm, every information is not ilm. So there's a hadith of Imam Jafar Sadiq, alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. The mafhum of that hadith is like this, that ilm is nothing which sometimes taught or learned, but it's a nur which, which comes from within. So there's a difference between information and ilm, knowledge. I can get the information, but if I don't absorb it, 
and I don't work over on it on, in practical life, then it's just an information. Just like how many continents are there? How big is New York State? What's the budget of New York State? It has nothing to do with me, right? But sometimes people are like this, they just go to Ayatollah Google and ask these questions. And they get this information, that's good. Sometimes they, they, they have this thing that when, when I'm, sit, I'm gonna sit with two or three other people, I say, oh, you know what, I know this. And that's, again, I don't have to explain it to you. Is that ill? Is that nur which is enlightening yourself from within? No. It's making your soul, your inner core, darker. It's making you reverse from where you have to go. So this is actually a side note which I wanted to give you here. The main course, main topic is this, that we need to know insan. If I don't know what insan is, I wouldn't know what I am. I wouldn't know what my relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I would be in oblivion. In the darkness, knowing nothing, don't know where am I going to go. Then Maulana can come over here and say, Jannat is this, Jahannam is this, and you wouldn't be responding to it. He's going to say, Jazid was that, and Imam Hussain was that, and you wouldn't respond to it. We don't respond to it, brothers and sisters. If I say a sakht baat, would you accept it? Inshallah, if you say salawat. In my limited opinion, like I said before, our ma'arifat of Imam Hussain, because we are in the tent of camp of Imam Hussain, is so limited that we love Imam Hussain as a person who is just helpless. Because he was alone, he had all his family slaughtered in front of him, he was thirsty, he was hungry, so I feel bad about him. And that's why I cry for him. Why does this happen, brothers and sisters? Because when we don't have the ma'arifa of Imam, not Imam Hussain, Imam, the position of Imamat. And then we see that th on this position we have a person named Hussain. And then I need to know with this person what kind of a connection do I have. If I don't have answers for all these questions, Imam Hussain, my own Imam Hussain, not the real one, would be no more than a homeless person who died on the side of a street. I would be crying for him too, right? From inside, I will be, I'll, I'll be feel, uh, feeling bad for him. He was hungry, he was thirsty, he, was, he died because of his stroke, or because he froze to death in northern areas in winter. That's what happens when insan doesn't know where he came from, what he is, where he is, and where he is going. That's why these things are really important. Inshallah, we don't want to pass this on to our next generation, this concept of Imam Hussein. Try to be with me. These are dif difficult concepts. So what I just said is that that, that Imam Hussein, who is, who is equal to a homeless person, is an Imam Hussein I made up. Because I am living in my fake reality. I am living in my bubble where I have created my own personal khuda, personal rasul, personal sharia, personal imama and imam. And I'm disconnected from haqiqa. I don't know how many uh, brothers and sisters are going to uh, university right now and learning about these human sciences and humanities and you know social sciences. But if you have even in a minor in your subject, you probably came across to these discussions. And if you are interested, you probably do this discussion. I don't know, because in Pakistan, I came from Pakistan, I did my school from Pakistan. In Pakistan, you have to be a doctor or engineer to get a really good wife, and that's it. 
That is what your ilmi level is. You have to be like this. I still remember that the last year of my, we were finishing our rotation. That was our last year. And the, the girls in my group, they said, yeah, after exam, I'm going to sleep till my rishta comes. So they were becoming doctor for that. Please recite salawat. I have an assumption, inshallah, we are not becoming doctors and engineers here for that. And we are becoming something else than doctors and engineers, which is, I mean, too much to uh, think of because we are, at the end, end of the day, we are desis, right? We have to fill uh, brown doctors in white hospitals everywhere. Apart from that, even if you studied in a minor sections of your whatever you're studying in your university, maybe these mabahith, these discussions came across. And if not, the other kind of discussions, which are the product of these kind of philosophies that what human beings are, what human, humanism is, because of that, these philosophies, the other discussions came up and I'm pretty sure we lost the battle there. Because anyone who has studied a little bit in the Western philosophy or the, you know, the theories of modern, modernism and postmodernism would kind of trash our or, you know, shattered our beliefs easily. They can do that. They can just bring you whole aqaid, whole system of aqidah, believing in God and everything to your personal level and say, just like you believe in one God and a Hussein who, was, who died for your, you know, for something, I believe in something else. We're all the same. You don't eat pork, I don't eat cow. We're the, all the same. It's all subjective. You can... Do whatever you want. Whatever feels good to you. Why is this a problem here, brothers and sisters? Because it shows that there's no reality. Right? If you believe that there's no reality and everybody in this world live in any reality they can think of, then it could, could be anything. Everybody is right. Pluralism is right. Why do you say that if this sister is not doing hijab, is doing a wrong thing. If na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah, this brother is going out and drinking, it's not a problem. Or oh, is a problem? Because it's not a problem. That's the lifestyle he chose. The ultimate goal of any philosophy of life is this, that you will be satisfied and happy. You are satisfied and happy while wearing black clothes, doing matam and coming to majlis, he's satisfied and happy going in a bar, drinking and dancing. Everyone is equal. If you believe in these, these theories, that's why this unwan is really important. Please recite another salawat. So yesterday we talked about inshallah, we're, we're going to enter into you know the masail which are directly related to this concept of knowing human what's the human value and how islam de define human inshallah from tomorrow but today i think we have to cover a few prerequisites of this discussion we gave the prerequisite of um the condition imam ali was telling to the people the condition of the pre-islam arabia or pre-islam makkah the Satan has his flags up and he was actually nourishing people with his own hands. Which I tried to explain that the system was satanic system there. And there was no deen. According to the language Imam used here, there was no deen. Because that's why I gave you the history of Imam Hazrat Ibrahim. That Kaaba and Mecca was a religious place. There's a first home built for Tawheed, for Allah, and was rebuilt by Hazrat Ibrahim, so people will become, Muwahid comes, come to Kaaba and do Hajj. And the same, the very place which was the point and pinnacle of unity, or, or unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
had became the pinnacle or the hub of polytheism. And then I related it to this, that the same thing was happening after Islam at the time of Imam Ali. Because how am I saying that? Because Imam Ali came to the member and said that today you are wearing the cloak of Iman and Islam inside out. Like you have the cloak of Iman on your shoulders, but it's, it's inside out. It's varune, it's like ulta. Meaning that whatever you believe is just superficial. It's actually harming what Rasulullah taught you. And that's why we see in the 61st century that these same people doing la ilaha illallah, saying la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, reading namaz and cutting the head of Imam Hussain. That's why this is really important, brothers and sisters, that we know, need to know the reality. We might get into this problem that we think that we are really good religious people and would, be, would find ourselves in the ranks of Yazidi Fawj, Yazidi army. That is possible. Because when there's darkness, when there's oblivion, nobody knows what's going to happen. When everybody, everybody is same, similar, the same position, you can go anywhere, right? So Imam, now I'm gonna say a few things what Imam Hussein said to the Muslim Ummah. I believe it's in the madan Arafat or Mina, where in the Hajj, you go for Arafat one day and then you go from Muzdalfa to Mina. In Mina, you stay for three days. So probably Imam, delivered this lecture, this, this sermon in front of the ulama of that time when Mawiyah was still the leader of the Muslims and that's what Imam saying to the scholars of Islam there. What Imam says here? Imam says, you see the covenant enacted with God being violated and trampled underfoot, yet you show no anxiety. When it comes to the covenants enacted with your fathers, you become greatly disturbed and anxious if they are only violated in part. But the pledges you have given to the most noble messenger sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam are a matter of complete indifference to you. These ulama sitting in this Muslim Ummah with high, in higher positions where your Khalifatul Muslimin when your Wali is Ma'awiyat Ibn Abi Sufyan that was their condition. Imam is saying that the values, Islamic values are being trampled under the feet and you do nothing. He didn't say you don't, you don't do anything. He said you don't even feel anything. You don't even feel anxiety. You don't even feel that I might have to change something. I might have to go on pulpit and say, no, this is wrong. Not only this. Imam is so beautiful. His words are so beautiful. Not only this, he said that if you compare the principles of Islam to the principles of your forefathers, you want to save the principles of your forefather and you don't care about Islamic principles. You know when Imam is saying forefathers here, what does it mean? That probably the second generation of Islam or the first generation of Islam. Forefathers means this kuffar. These ulama of Islamic ummah, they're more concerned about the principles and the culture, quote unquote, of their kafir forefathers than the principles of Islam. Why am I saying it here in 2022 in New York, Shaya Najaf Center? What it has to do with me? Same thing is happening right now, right? Are we, are we anxious about this that 
something is wrong with our communities. Something is wrong with Muslims. We are sometimes, I remember like probably 15 years ago, there was a discussion in a masjid on Shabi Ashur, actually uh, yeah, Shabi Ashur, about what's happening in Pakistan. What should we do? I said, yeah, it's good because it's Shabi Ashur, that's fine. We have to remember Imam Hussain. But this is a good thing too. Pakistan is a Muslim country. People are in, tr in trouble there. And we should be involved. I was, I was involved in this dis discussion. But as soon as the discussion was over, I just, it just struck to me. Maybe I was wrong. But that discussion was just, there was a break between the amal of two namaz. And they just wanted to pass some time so they can finish their tea. If our anxiety about Muslim Ummah is only this, that we have to have a discussion for our tea and toast, now we are in trouble, brothers and sisters. We need to feel it. And not feeling like this, that I come to, well, you are, mashallah, you are young brothers, that, you know, that brother, you, did you see his Facebook post? See what he was doing? You know that sister, you know, how was she pose, posing on Instagram? No, this is not Amr bin Maru wa Nahyan al Munkar. This is not. This is, again, a tea and toast discussion. Just laklaka is a Just the delicious discussions and gossip. If I'm concerned about a hijabi sister being non hijabi on Facebook, I have to take serious steps, meaning, talk to her. Do you have any problem? You are hijabi, you are hijabi right now. One Muslim brother, if I see him in a wrong place he, where he shouldn't be, and actually posting it too on Facebook, tomorrow I see him and I say, what happened brother? And when I'm saying this to you, I'm saying it to myself first, because, because of our social norms, ghiba is easy. Gossip is easy than amr bil maruf wa nahyan al munkar. Because he's my friend, right? I go and say, brother, what happened? What's it, what's it to you? This is my life. I can do whatever I want. Yesterday I was in Chai Najaf doing Naira Hedri and everything. Today is another day, new day, right? At night, I'm a Shia Muslim wearing black clothes. In the morning, I'm someone else. We're living in a society, I'm repeating again, that where the gender fluidity is like this, that you could be a man in the morning and women at, the at night. So I can be a Muslim at night and someone else in the morning. These are the gifts of modernist society. Oh, of course, they make good cars and you know, buildings and all those things, anything which can make you feel good. With a click of a button, the Amazon guy comes and Amazon Fresh is delivered to your doorsteps in two, two hours. That's good. Nothing is wrong about that. Islam is not against that. But along with that, the whole package is like this. That these things came in our society as well. And we are living in this society. This Shahi Najaf community, all these communities, they are small communities, which are I think we have like as many as uh, as many people we have in one community that many differences we have in that community. Uski nazar aisi uska imam barga aisa uska alam aisa uska matam aisa Why why because again I'm going to say a few such things please brace yourself and recite a salawat I'm not talking about this specific community, please. I don't know this community, I'm just visiting. Inshallah, this community is good. But this is a universal problem in our communities, right? Because the hand which is feeding us is shaitani hand. I'm not talking about the khuraq and ease, uh, eating from the mouth. The only Islam comes to us is halal ghost and non-halal ghost, right? There's a joke about this. Some, one of my, actually, someone I know said that if you know that this person 
serve halal food, go to his bathroom and see if he has lota, then he serves halal food. I said, wow, mashallah, I don't know. These are good tricks. I, I, don't, I really don't know about that. So our Islam is just like lota and halal gosh Islam right now. I have to be frank here. You know that you know old movies and everything. Sometimes they, when they make fun of mullahs, Malvi, they just show a tasbih and a lota. They made fun of this, and we actually practicing this lota Islam right now. No, brothers and sisters. When I'm saying that we are being fed by shaitan, it's not only haram gosht. It's not only alcohol which is there, don't say that, okay, don't worry about this. Do whatever you want to do, but you have to have think, good thinking. No. You are what you eat, right? You eat pork, you are, there you go. You eat nudges, you drink nudges, you are what you eat. It's not going to come out of your system, both biologically and both spiritually. It's not going to come out of your system. But, more than that, these ideas, these great ideas of freedom, these great ideas that I can do whatever I want to do, these great ideas that I am not bound by any boundaries while I'm confined in my own self. I don't believe in Islam and Shia Islam and Allah I don't believe in any Allah. I believe in Allah. I have talked to people like this. I believe in Allah, but I don't believe in Allah who sent down a sharia which says, eat this and don't eat this. No, I don't think that he is that, you know, narrow-minded, na'uzubillah. I don't think he is that myopic. So, I believe in what? Just like I believe in my self-made Imam Hussain, I'm making my own imaginary Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who say, okay, you are azad, you can do whatever you want to do. You'll be still my abd. But the point here is this, again, well, I'm not going to give this point because it's not going to be taken. Just take it like, a, uh, you know, um, uh, f for some time and then inshallah we're going to explain it to, to you later. Please use our salawat. When I believe in a God which is my, made by my own self, I do it so I don't believe in the real God. And that's what the real polytheism is. One more story, there was some Sunni brother, not, not all the Sunni brothers are bad, inshallah. They are our brothers, they are our big brothers, we respect them. But sometimes they are myopic or something. Kuta nazar. So I had this mohar in my pocket in Pakistan and I was reading namaz on that and he said like, oh, you are doing sajda on that? So you are a polytheist. Sometimes insani aqal becomes that confined. They think only when, unless you have a uh, you know, a murti, a booth, a statue in your house, then you are not polytheist. I believe in any system other than Allah system. Even if I want to be, if I don't want to be a polytheist, I'll become polytheist. That's what the reason of isms here. Humanism, feminism, you can name more isms than me. When you are not linked to one, one entity which is real and nothing but the reality, the true reality which is Khuda, which is Allah, then you make different isms and you're living in your own world so nobody could disturb you. That's why when these people, they don't want to share anything with their parents, they share their weird posts on Facebook. I, I really don't understand this. I mean, I think that my privacy is private from my parents. 
again, I'm not saying that parents have to barge in everybody's home and just go on what are they doing. Don't inspire on your kids. We have to have the communication with our kids so we have a, you know, uh, faith in them. Don't inspire on them, please. But of course, you are murabbi, you, are, you have to do tarbiyat, you have to, you are the guardian, you have to take care of them. It's like taking care of them. Just like when you set, send them out and say, please wear a seatbelt to your teenager driving a car, you need to know where he's going, where she is going, whom she's talking, where he's talking, whom he's talking to, whom he or she is playing uh, PS3 games with, or computer games with, whom he or she is talking to. On the one time, I, I well, I, I don't say to other other people, especially uncles, that Malana has PS3. So I have PS3, and one one of my uh, you know brother-in-law, he was playing and. The speaker was on. So these games were, you know, they have the age limit. We're living in a really good society where they have the age limit for everything. 18 is what? Driving? 16 is driving? 21 is drinking? 25 is lying? 30 f is fornicating? Right? We have ages. We are living in a good system. So this game was entitled for 18 plus. And the voices I was hearing were like 13, 12, and they were cursing and doing whatever they want to do. So that was my one, only one uh, interaction with this interactive world. I don't know what, and it was like probably 15 years ago. I don't know how much we have gone out in this thing. I really don't know. We have to be. Then, after that, we see, we talk to my child who just went to college, and I say, oh my God, after two months, he changed like this. Baba, you were not looking at him when he was 13 years old. You didn't know what he was doing. Again, not spying. Not spying. Not taking care of him. I don't teach my child how to drive and he go there and Khudana Khasta get into accident. I go and yell at him. I give a car keys to a 12 year old and he drives because he loves to drive. And I'm a good parent because I love what my kids love. And he get into a ditch. The problem is, again, I say this, so horrible and scary stories, but you are thinking in your mind, probably I'm a mind reader, I'm not. But Maulana, you know, physical damage, getting into ditch, getting into accident, it matters. You break your bone, it matters. You don't believe in Allah, yeah, it's okay. That's what I think. Inshallah, you can come and say, no, Maulana, you are lying, you, you think wrong. I, I wish you say this to me. But deep in our hearts, it's not important. Knowing Allah, following Sharia, reading namaz, not drinking, not doing things like this, not having fun. It's, it doesn't matter. Under the context of fun, doing all these things, it doesn't matter. Why? Because we don't believe in Allah. We don't believe in the relationship we have to Allah. Again, to explain Allah will be difficult. So I chose a smaller, easier route. I think it will be, inshallah, easier route. That we are going to explain Allah's existence, His essence, through our existence and essence. And that's what insan shanasi is. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made insan, he said, I'm making, to farishte, what did he say in Quran? I'm making a khalifa. My vicegerent on earth. Khalifa is like a person who has to do God's work on earth. 
that tightly we are related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters. If that's, and when we have this mindset that this is what, this is what my position is, just beneath Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all these hadiths make sense. When Imam Ali said that don't sell out yourself less than Jannah. You know what Imam is saying here? Your ultimate goal is not Jannah. Don't sell yourself less than Jannah. Getting into Jannah, that's the least thing we can do as human beings. That's the least thing we can do. Our position is far, far greater than that. Our position is a position where Jibreel cannot go. That was not Rasulullah only. A man's position is that, a human, an insan position is that, where Farishte cannot go. But what, what, what happens? Why is it like this? Why is it, I mean, probably it's a new thing for you, it's a alienated thing, because these things have nev never said here. Or if they are said, they are said in the hadith form, and most of the hadith and riwayat are kind of in quotations, and they're not explained very, very well. So if we are learning this, inshallah, we are learning something from this. It should change our mindset. And if we learn something till now, please recite salawat. And if you learn something which you didn't learn before, please recite louder salawat. Yeah. Uh, that's not new. That's not louder. So you didn't learn. Please recite salawat. So when I give like really, really high dose, I have to make things a little bit lighter here, right? So that's why I have to make things like this. So forgive me if it's, it was really heavy, but again, brothers and sister, sisters, it is important. My time is up. I think we don't have any uh, clock or anything like this. I have to see it here. So all in all, brothers and sisters, that's why these discussions are really important. I would love to sit with you overnight. Well, not overnight, after Fajr. It's a good thing that we, we start from Fajr, not overnight. But if brothers like it, I can sit with you and have a discussion. I love that. I learned from that. It's not just like, it's, um, well, it's in Urdu, I don't know the translation. It's not Ilmi Ayashi. It's like we have to learn because it's important. Believe me, what I believe is this, that all these things we are doing is just mere rituals. They are mere tick marks. 30 days of Rosa, so, two months and 10 days of Aza, and then I'm free, right? Inshallah, if you're not like, inshallah, you're not like me. Like if you believe and if you know Islam like this then you will be like me but after 40 years when I read my Zuhra and Asr Namaz what comes in my mind Chalo ho gaya, alhamdulillah. even after 40 years Namaz is farahat for me it's not like this okay you know of course that if you are thinking in this way yeah I had a responsibility and I just finished this responsibility, that's fine. But if it's only that, then I didn't learn anything. If namaz is not giving me taste, if I'm not enjoying it, I don't know how am I going to transfer it to my kids. I don't know. Again, brothers, please don't think that it's difficult. It's not difficult. When we get disease when we get ill even common cold when our sinuses we have sinusitis right we cannot taste the delicious most delicious food what do we do do we ask my, uh, our mothers to make more delicious food no we try to treat that disease 
Take an antibiotic, so sinusitis, if it's infectious, will go away. Or wait for it, if it's viral, to go away on itself. When the disease goes away, the same food tastes really good. If I am after 40 years not enjoying my namaz, it's because I'm diseased, my ruh is diseased. And don't, don't think, oh my God, what did he say? No. Inshallah, just work for one, go one step forward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he's going to come 10 steps to, towards us. Our imams, they are the madhar, they are the dhuhur, they make apparent the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we see Imam Hussein coming close to the Lashkar, to the army of Hur, who is appointed by Ibn Ziyad to not let Imam Hussein pass his barrier and go to Kufa, and at that time they are really, really thirsty, and those people who are stopping Imam to get to Kufa, who are the enemies, who are waiting for the orders from Ibn Ziyad to cut Imam Hussein's head, and they're really thirsty, Imam says, the first thing is this, just give them all water. Not only them, give their animals water. Not like this. When you are really thirsty, you want to drink water really quickly. So Imam saw one person one of the soldiers from Hur's army trying to drink from the water bag, Mashkiza, and he was not able to hold it. And then Imam went there and said, let me hold it and I can pour water in your mouth. This is the mazhar of Allah's mercy. The same hand who is trying to, who is waiting for the orders to kill Imam. Imam is feeding them. Is giving water to them. We, we believe in a Allah, that kind of Allah. And that kind of kind Imam who cries his heart out that, oh Allah, I don't I cannot say how merciful you are. So if we take one step towards Allah, He's going to come ten steps towards us. Why am I saying that? Because when mazhar Allah, when the vestgerant of Allah, when the wali Allah just saw and talked to a person who was on the verge of this, that, Maybe I'm doing something wrong in my life. He attracted his heart. And who was that? That was Hur ibn Yazid al -Riyahi. If these things after 1400 years can tremble our hearts that how merciful Imam Hussain was, Hur was right there. He saw that. And then he has the other that when they were trying to read namaz, he said, no, I'm not going to read, I'm not, not going to lead a namaz, a salat, I'm going to read namaz behind Imam Hussain. Brothers and sisters, these opportunities when we see mercy of Allah, that's an opportunity, that's an open door where Allah Ta'ala asks us to come in. And when we are mu'addab like hur, when we have etiquettes like hur, we do go inside that merciful land of imama and wilaya and ilahiyah. Who saw this and it just kind of made a mark in his heart. But he had to provide for his family, right? And he was appointed as a leader of a soldier, as a commander of a, an army by the most powerful man at that time, Yazid. So it was really hard for him to, you know, leave this position. Till what? 
till the day of Ashura, in some riwayat, till the night of Ashura. And at that time, he was just walking back and forth. And one of his companions said that, Oh, Hur, you are the bravest person from Kufa. And right now I see that you are a child who is mustarib. Who is moved by something. What's wrong with you? He said, do you hear this? He said, hear what? He said, this al-atash, al-atash. That I'm thirsty, the thirst, oh thirst. From the camp of Imam Hussein, I am the cause of it. Brothers and sisters, this realization of your wrongdoings in your life is an opportunity from Allah. You make a right decision, walk towards Hussein, and he's going to take you. Hur is and was and is even right now, he was the cause of Imam Hussein ending up in Karbala. But this merciful household, they don't care about these things. They just want you and me to be with them. So that's why when Hur on Ashura came like an ab with his hands tied, his eyes, there were some high eyes closed, tied with a cloth, and do tawbah. Imam didn't say, I forgive you. Imam hugged him first. He said that you are free men, not only in this world, but in the hereafter. This is what Islamic philosophy is, brothers and sisters. Hur is free. Anyone who is thinking that he can do or she can do whatever they want in their life are free, they are not free. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We end tonight's program again with um, with the dua, um, Zamana, and then af right after the dua, please go upstairs to the main hall for um, the the matam. Uh, Brother Hussaini, is he still here in the back? Brother Hussaini, is your is your son here for for the dua? No. Let's read dua together. Um. Allahumma kulli waliyika ala ba'i fi hadi sa'a wa fi kulli sa'a waliyan wa hafizan wa fa'izan wa nafira wa dhlilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu arzaka sa'a وَتُمَتِّيَهُ فِيهَا تَذِيلًا اللهم صل على 